when God, you are working in God's plan, he goes before you, he goes with you, he walks with you, he walks through you, and he walks for you. So, an embodiment of exploit. Working in God's plan empowers you for exploit. Welcome to Apostle TV. The message you're about to watch will definitely transform your life. Be blessed as you watch. Engaging the ministry of the Holy Ghost for exploit. We have established the fact that the Holy Ghost is a multifaceted spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4 to 6, it said, There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same law. And he said, there are diversities of operations, but it's operations, but it is the same God that works all in all. Now he's just talking about the multi-dimensional ministry of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Many people just think it's about speaking in tongues. That's okay. <laughs> that is the biblical authentic proof of his presence. We don't make light with that. But he has, he's a multi-task spirit. He has diversities of operations in empowering the saints. His ultimate mission is to empower us for dominion. To empower us for what? Dominion. He and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's dominion. That's the Holy Ghost. Now, we look at just three of these diversities of operations that empower believers for exploit. You know, exploit is outstanding accomplishment, extraordinary feats, out of this world order of impact. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. The light of the world, the salt of the earth. Now, those are all definitions or descriptions of exploit. Now, there are three operational dimensions of the Holy Ghost that empower believers for exploit. One, the spirit of love. So, which means the spirit of love. Say it loud. Not just loving God, but loving God above all else, including self. Praise God. It's not, I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. It's loving God above all else, including yourself. Huh. He said, if you don't deny yourself, and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Put yourself behind. Let me remain permanently in front. And then you are truly in love. And that's why we need to be empowered to operate in that realm. It's not easy for you to love anybody beyond yourself. But that is the love we are talking about. Loving God above all else, including yourself. So in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. So there is the spirit of love. Romans 5.5 5, The love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. That is given to us. What is in the love of God? So it means divinity. Divinity. For he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. First John 4 16. That when we are rooted and grounded in love, we are filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. So, 
What is a law that empowers men for domain for, for exploit? Divinity. Love is a facilitator of the divine nature. Love facilitates divine nature. So we are divine personalities in human structure. Can I hear your amen? amen? The love of God makes you and I divine personalities in human structure. And God is the epitome of exploit. Creation remains the benchmark for exploit. Man, you know that because everything has been in shape. The devil notwithstanding. The sun is in its place, the moon is in its place, the galaxies are in their places. By the order of creation, what else will a man accomplish that will compare with the exploit of creation? So, so, so when you are in law, you are a divine personality operating within this human structure. You are an embodiment of dominion. Glory to God. <laughs> Whatever clears the way for God, clears the way for you. Can I hear your amen? Therefore, receive this morning the spirit of love afresh in your life. May the love of God keep burning all through your days in life. May divine nature come to find expression through you naturally. Amen. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. We are redeemed for exploits, but it takes the operation of the spirit of law to command exploits. Remember? Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it hasn't entered the heart of any man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. That's his law. It is reserved for certified, anointed lovers of God. Amen. Amen. When you become a certified and anointed lover of God, you become a commander of exploits. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. Let me hear your email like soldiers. Say it like you believe it. But let us not love in word nor in tongue, but in truth and in deed. First John 3.18. Praise God. The love of God is not theoretical, it's practical. What are the proofs of the love of God born in our lives? If you love him, obey him will be a delight. Praise God. This is the love of God that we obey his commandments. His commandments are not grievous. First John 3, I mean 5, 3. Whosoever has my commandment and keep it is the one that loveth me. John 14, number 21. And I will manifest myself to him. So obeying his commandment as revealed to you in your study, in your meditation, or in the word of the Lord as preached in the fellowship. Delight. Not just trying to do it. Okay, let's do it. If you don't do it, I'm a leader now. If I don't do it, I will get free. Let's just go. No. Blessed is a man that feared the Lord, that greatly delights himself in his commandment. When God said, this is the place, even though contrary to my own view, I received it with delight. No tension, no strain. So if I was the only one coming here, I would come home. And there is nothing you can do to make me come back. There is nothing. I would rather die here with God than live around with you. When it becomes a delight, then you are in love. If you don't have anything to do in obeying God, you will just be frustrated in church. Nothing will happen. Because every change of story is in response to your obedience. Every change of story that any believer will see in his life is in response to his obedience. 
if you will hearken to my voice and obey what I tell you to do, I will set you on high. I will change your story. I will set you on high above all nations. I will change your story. If you love him, you will obey him. Two, if you love him, you will love his word. Psalm 119 verse 97. Oh, our love I thy law. Everyone that loves God loves his word. You don't turn your Bible where I'm looking for where it is on Sunday. You are consuming it. If you love him, you will love his house. They won't be looking for you. It will be sweet home. Home, sweet home. You are always rushing. Always panting for his presence. Can I hear your amen? I was glad when they said to me, come, let's go to the house of the Lord. 47 years ago, I gave my life to Christ. 47 years after, you can count on your two hands. It will never be up to 10 that I was not in church. Never up to 10. Where would this boy be? Never up to 10 times I was not in church in 47 years. Don't mind the way God loves me and likes me. I, I love his presence. Love his presence. Are we chasing after you to come to church? Can I tell you something? Nobody followed me up. I followed God up. I was following God. God, where are you? <laughs> Amen. In the name of Jesus, as the anointing comes on you today, the love of God will explode in your heart and friend. When I came back from Accra, 3 a.m. on Saturday morning, I was at the early morning prayer. I still went out for soul winning on Saturday. We came back with 132 souls saved. Amen. If you love him, you will love souls. David said, I will also give thy testimony before kings and I will not be ashamed. Psalm 119 verse 46. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of God for Christ. It's the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes. If you love him, you will love souls. If you don't love souls, you don't love him. Let's stop playing games. Praying for souls to be saved. Praying for them to be saved. Look at your own Bible is not tenable in heaven. This is the one they will use. This one. Do you love me? He said, feed my lamb. That means go after my lamb before the wolves will eat them up. Mm. They are not in church here. They are outside. Other sheep of fire that are not here, I must also bring them. John 10, 16. So if you love me, he said, do you love me? Ask three times. He said, the only way to prove to love me is that you love what I love. Do you love the lost? You don't love the lost, you don't love me. Ooh. You don't love the lost, you don't love me. What an opportunity between now and the 18th of September to prove your love for God by going after souls with every zeal and zest. Someone in this church testified that I gave him the first tract in his life, 1969, July. I got saved in February of that year. He described the place where I gave it to him. 1969. Friends, to sit down in church waiting for things to happen while my waste his entire life. By the anointing of today, you'll never be a bench warmer again. Somebody's blessed. Amen. Number two, the dimension of the Holy Ghost that empower men for exploit is the spirit of vision. The spirit of vision. You know, I will part my children from all fresh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of God's plan and purpose for his children. Is the custodian of God's plans and purpose for us. You know, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. John 16, 13. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. That's the vision aspect of the ministry of the Holy Ghost. For he shall glorify me. He said, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine. 
my plan for you and we show it to you. We show it to you. That's his ministry. And it's so simple. If you check Joel chapter 2 verse 1 to 11, you see that powerful out of this what kind of army? According to verse 7 and 8, they will walk everyone in his way, everyone in his path, and they shall not break their land. And verse 11, the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, because his camp is very great, and great is he that executed this war. It's a visionary army. What makes them unusual? God goes before them. God goes with them. When God, you are working in God's plan, he goes before you. He goes with you. He walks with you. He walks through you. And he walks for you. So, an embodiment of exploit. Working in God's plan empowers you for exploit. God sent us to this forest. He has made a city out of the forest. God sent me to Kaduna. He routed the place. He sent me to Lagos. It exploded. People were sitting on top of roofs and trees to hear the word of God. Sent us here. The place can't take us anymore. The 100,000 stuff we are building won't take us. We will enter their running multiple services. It's already happened. We are already 100,000 here now because there are these 52,000 chairs outside. So what is in the building? Listen to me. From now, you will never miss God's plan again in your life. If this short man walked away from God's plan, he will be nowhere, he, there will be no identity, there will be no voice. God is not a respect of persons. You won't miss out of God's plan in your life. You will not invest in a business that will write off all your profits in life. You will not take steps to regret again in your life. As you give room to the vision ministry of the Holy Ghost, it will guide every step of your way into your future. And finally, as we close, the spirit of boldness empowers believers for exploits. The spirit of boldness. That is the cure for the spirit of fear. What disqualified the ten spies from entering the land was the spirit of fear. What gave Joshua and Caleb their place was the spirit of boldness. Yes, we saw giants there. But our God is giantier than the giants we saw there. Let's go over the walls and clear them. There's nothing in them. The spirit of boldness gave them their place. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30, 31 and 33. There are giants in every man's promised land. So you need the spirit of boldness to subdue them. There were not only demonic giants in this land. Though. There were togri giants in this land. Kokina land. Who went wide and burned down bosses. Our bosses. They said, what are you doing here? We are in charge here. I looked at them and smiled. I don't know how many of them are alive now. He said, don't cr If you see a trailer coming and you say the trailer won't go and you're a human being. Trailer said go, you say no way. You won't go from here. I'm a monile. Trailer <laughs> said clear. <laughs> and then he puts it in gear one and you are still there. <laughs> you will answer on the other side very fast. Man can stand the way against God. I knew the witches and wizards were too small. So they were not my concern. The talks are too small. So if they see me walking on food, they'll be running. If they see me not driving, if they see me walking on food, they'll be running. 
It takes the spirit of boldness to possess your possession. Every man's promised land has giants. Some of them with six fingers on each hand and six toes. And they show you their fingers. <laughs> Do you have eyes here? Yes. Can you see? How many mummies have six fingers? Ah. <laughs> but Joshua and Caleb said, Nonsense! Therefore, receive today the spirit of boldness. We were in one motel years ago, and some robbers invaded the, invaded the motel. And I had a noise in my room. So I came out and I saw five weighed, say, demon looking folks. I put my hands on my waist. My hands was on my waist. Not here. <laughs> in my pajamas. In the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. I didn't touch anybody. The spirit of boldness will secure your rights in God. I was waking from sleep. Whether a lion is just awake or has woken before, is he less than a lion? Any day he remains carnivorous, he will eat up anything. Therefore, receive right now a fresh baptism of the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of boldness. In the name of Jesus. All the traumas in the north in 87. Nobody moved near our church. It's a lion's den. It's what? The spirit of boldness. Amen. That's what we need. And that's what you have this morning. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Father.